Today's lesson is on function notation. Function notation, again, transformations of exponential functions. So I want to make it really clear what function notation is. And I think you will find that the way I'm going to explain it today should make everything very clear for you. I'm going to talk first again about what is function notation. When we say y is equal to f at x, f at x is function notation. In essence, all we're doing is replacing y with some function f at x. So here, if I said f at x is equal to this equation, you'd say, okay, that's like y is equal to this. I know this is a parabola, it's been shifted up one, that's all. And if I asked you, what is f at two? So if I said, what is f at 2? You'd say, well, f at 2 would be equal to 2 squared plus 1, which is 5. If I said, what's f at 0? You'd say 0 squared plus 1, and so on. So this is just telling you what you've plugged in for x into the equation. You can also use function notation from a table of values. If I asked you, what is f at 2? What is f at 2? And you'd say, oh, you're asking me, what is the height of the function when x is 2? And your answer would be 8. You can also use function notation when you're using a table or a graph. If I said, what is f at 2? Again, what is f at 2? Well, you'd look at when x is 2, what is the height of the function? And you'd say f at 2 is 1. So there's different ways that you can use function notation to find a value, whether it's a, a graph, a table of values, or an equation. Generally, it's an equation. So what happens with transformations? We're using function notation, and that's why they teach you function notation, so that they can make more sense of transformations for you. This function notation says, I want you to apply all of these rules. I want you to do all of these different rules to this function, to some function, and this is what it's going to be. So it's describing what the transformations are going to be for any given function. Now they, they don't tell you, or they don't have to tell you what the function is. They can say, oh, I want you to apply this rule, this set of rules, and you know what they all stand for, vertical stretches and compressions, horizontal stretches and compressions, horizontal shifts left, right, vertical shift up, down. I want you to apply this to this. This is my parent function, the root of x, and I want you to transform it using this rule. So if I said, what will the new equation be? What will the new equation be for this? Well, if I'm starting with the root of x, I know that this part here, this root of x, I'm just trying to get a funny, a nice color, but there's nothing around. Okay, here, so I'm going to use this function, the root of x, or I could say I want you to apply it to x squared, or I want you to apply it to one over x, or two to the x. So we're going to apply this rule to each of these functions. So the root of x would become y equals, now remember, this part here, is the x part, right? That's the x. And the y part is on the other side, the outsides. So the minus 3 and the minus 2 are changes to y. That's an awful color to write with. The inside x, the outside y. If you remember that, this is easy stuff. So, okay, I'm going to put the red stuff in here. This is my, my changes to x. They were pink, sorry, it was pink, goes in here, and everything else goes on the outside. So it's minus 2 times this minus 3. And there's my transformed function, the new equation for it. If I apply this to x squared, I'd say, okay, well, x squared, I'm going to put the x in brackets, and I'm going to plug in what I'm plugging in for x here. So in this case, I'm plugging in negative x plus 1 for x, square it, and the other numbers go out front and at the end. So now I've made this transform by this rule. This is a rule that we're going to use. 
1 over x, that sometimes causes a bit of trouble, but remember that everything here is x. So I put that into the denominator where it belongs, down here, right? There's my x. And the minus 2 means minus 2 times 1 is minus 2, and then minus 3. So this all starts falling into place, right? All I have to do is figure out where the x part goes, and it goes where you see the x. In this case, it's going to be the exponent of 2. Now remember, 2 to the x, don't confuse this with a stretch or a compression. It, this is the parent function. Okay, that's sometimes a problem for some students. So I have minus 2 times, that's the yellow part here, minus 2 times 2 to a new x value that I'm plugging in, minus x plus 1, close a bracket, Oh, I don't need a bracket, it's okay, it's all in the exponent. Like that, 2, this is 2 to the x, so I put, it, put this in for the x, and minus 3. And there you go. Now, if I wanted you to graph these, I'd say, okay, what is the mapping rule? What mapping rule applies this transformation? And you'd say, okay, my x's and y's are going to change. How are they going to change? Here's what happens to x. I'm going to do a negative x, and I'm going to subtract 1. Remember, x's are weird. It's inside the bracket. It does strange things. If it says plus 1, it's going to be minus 1. And note that the negative has been factored out. That's your k value. Your x has to have no coefficient, even not even a negative sign. And the a and the q are changes to y. So I have minus 2y minus 3. Now this is a mapping rule that I could use for each one of these individual functions. All I need to know are some key points on each graph. Key points on each function. Now that's, that's fine when I have an equation like this. I can find key points for the root of x. You should know those graphs really well. Look back to parent functions in chapter 1. If I was trying to apply it to this function, I would find all the coordinates and I would apply this rule to each of the x's and y's. I could also do that for these points. I could plug them in and get, uh, sorry, plug it into the, um, the mapping rule and get new transform points that are governed by this rule. This is my rule. Okay, this is the rule that I'm using to change some function. That's all it means. Okay, so let's go on to the end point for transforming exponential functions. And I have a few here that we're going to work on, and that's going to be it for today. So here's my function here, 2 to the 2x minus 4. Right away, you should note that the coefficient of x is 2, and I don't want it to have a coefficient. Remember that the transformation rule is k times x minus p. Okay, so I have to have this factored out. So immediately, you should factor out the 2 before you start anything. And I can tell you from my 23 years of teaching experience that that is a mistake that even the finest and smartest students miss on exponentials or on any transformation. Okay, so be careful with that. What is the mapping rule for this? There are no changes to y. If there was a change to y, it would have to be here, out here, and out here. So there's no change to y. All the changes have to do with x. So that means my x and y go to something and y. What happens to x? It gets divided by 2. Remember, x are weird. It looks like 2 times. It's not. You're going to divide by 2. And this says minus 2, you're going to add 2. Okay, so let's go to, these are points on the parent function. Parent function is 2 to the x, right? y equals 2 to the x. That's the parent from which this transformation happened. So if I put in minus 2 into the parent function, I'd have 2 to the negative 2. That means 2 squared, 1 over it. So I have 1 quarter to the minus 1 is a half. I'm going to fill these in quickly. This should be easy for you now. 
and I'm going to apply this transformation. This is a little one. I only have to work with the X's, right? So I plug in minus 2, and here that gives me negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. And I do nothing to the Y. I put in a negative 1. Minus a half plus 2, that's 1.5 and a half. Now you could use decimals for these as well if you want. You're going to graph it anyway. So now I plug in 0, that gives me 2. And a 1 is still a 1. And a half plus 2 is 2 and a half. And I leave the Y's alone again. And this gives me 1 plus 2 is 3 and 4. So now I'm going to graph this. Now recall what happens with asymptotes with exponential functions. The um, asymptote is y equals 0 unless there is a vertical shift. There is no vertical shift here because there's nothing here. This one has a new asymptote. It's going to be y equals plus 5. This one's going to be y equals minus 2. This one is still y equals 0. So I write that on here. Always write on your asymptotes and label them properly. Okay, so now I plot the points. So I have one and a quarter. I have one and a half and a half. It's all very tight. It's two and one. Two and a half and three. No, two and a half and two. That's here. And three and four. One, two, three, four. So there's... A few points I can join them because I know that the domain is X is an element of real numbers note that it does not cross the asymptote very important what is the function notation so the question was what was the rule that was applied to 2 to the X and you'd say well there was no a change there was no P change remember all the letters the only thing that happened was I did this, where y is equal to 2 to the x. We used 2 to the x. So the asymptote, we should write that in here, asymptote was y equals 0. And the domain and range, domain, well, if you look at it, it's the set of all real numbers. Anything can be plugged in and get an answer. And the range, the function starts above zero and goes up. So the range is, and I'm sure I'm off the page. Sorry about that. So y is greater than zero. Y is an element of real numbers. Okay, so that's, that's that one done. Let's go to the next one here. We have minus 2, 2 to the negative x minus 3 plus 5. Again, the first thing you should notice is that the coefficient of x is not 1. It's negative 1. So that means I need to factor out the negative before I do the transformations. Now negative is not such a big deal. Well, it is in case because you would move it the wrong way. Um, but if it's a 2 or a 3, that makes a big difference in your horizontal shift. Okay, so what happens to x's and y's? The x, I divide by negative 1 or multiply by negative 1. So it's going to be a negative x. This says plus 3, i minus 3. And the y's are always the easy ones to do. You just read them. Minus 2y plus 5. Um, beginning points. So I'm just going to copy these from my other one because it's the same parent function, which is y equals 2 to the x. See the 2 here? This is my exponential function. This one's going to be 3. It's going to be different. Okay, so I'm just going to give you the values, plug these in to save some time. It's minus 1 and 4.5, minus 2 and 4, um, minus, just a minute here. I should just do them myself. Minus 2, minus 1, minus 3, minus 3, minus 2 and 4, minus 4 and 1. Oh, it was this one. Minus 4 and 1 and minus 5. That's minus 5 and minus 4 is minus 8 plus 5 is minus 3. And I didn't do the 0. Okay, so that's minus 3 and minus 2 plus 5 is 3. So if you graph these points now, the first thing you're going to put on is your asymptote. And here it is right here, right? Where's the asymptote? It's sticking up right here. 
There's the other one here. We'll highlight it while I got it up. So y equals 5 is my asymptote. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just made enough space here. Okay, so there's y equals 5. I have minus 1 and 4 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. Minus 2 and 4. Minus 3 and 3. Minus 4 and 1. 1, 2, 3, 4 and minus 5 and minus 3. 1, 2, 3. Ooh, way over here. Okay, so here's my functions coming up like this. Z like that. Okay, notice it doesn't go over this. What is the function notation? Y equals, so what happened to the x? That's going to be in my f part, f at minus x minus 3. The y stuff goes in here and here. Done. It's that easy. Domain, real numbers again. x is an element of real numbers. And the range this time you have to watch because it's going, it's under here, right? So y is less than 5 and y is an element of real numbers. Okay, and now let's go to the last one. So this time we have a base of 3. The parent function y equals 3 to the x this time. 3 to the x. So what happens to x and y? The coefficient of x is already 1. We don't have to factor that out. So x and y go to negative x minus 1, and the y changes. There's nothing out here, so I'm not multiplying the y by anything, but I'm going to subtract 2 from it. Now, we need to find the points on 3 to the x this time. They're not going to be the same as the 2, obviously. So 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. And I'm going to apply this mapping rule to it. So minus minus 1 is 1 minus 1 makes 0, and a third minus 2 is minus 5 thirds. If I plug in 0, I would have negative 1, and 1 minus 2 is minus 1, and I plug in 1, that's minus 2, and 3 minus 2 is 1, and minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3, and 9 minus 2 is 7. Sorry if I'm going too fast, but I want to get this lesson done pronto. Okay, so here my asymptote, y equals minus 2. Okay, you got that on, on your radar here, right from here. Oh, let me go back up for a sec. Minus 2, that's my asymptote. Put your asymptote on, make sure your function is approaching that somehow. So I have minus 1 and a third. Oh, sorry, I'm reading the 3 to the x. So I have 0 and minus 5 thirds. Minus 5 thirds is minus 1 and 2 thirds. Minus 1 and minus 1, minus 2 and 1, minus 3 and 7. Ooh, that's going to be way up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It's way up here. Okay, so my graph is coming down like this. Ignore that dumb point I put on there. And bingo. There we go. So there's your function. What's the function notation? Y equals... So there is no um, a value. So it's the function for negative x plus 1 minus 2, just like that. And finally, what is the domain and range? Domain, real numbers. It's going to make it short this time. Real numbers. I can put in any value, get an answer. And the range, it never touches or crosses y equals negative 2. So y has to be greater than negative 2, and y is an element of real numbers. I hope this lesson really helped you straighten out what function notation, transformations, and exponential functions are all about. All the best.